and I call the member for Deakin. Thanks very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a melancholy duty for all of us here in the chamber today to speak on this motion, uh, the condolence on the death of Sisto Malaspina, particularly for all the Melburnians in the chamber. And um, a lot has been said about Sisto Malaspina. The reality is, for anyone born and bred in Melbourne, and there are hundreds of thousands of people that fall into this category who attended or dined at Pellegrini's or visited, you felt like you knew Sisto. Sisto made you feel special. Uh, Sisto and the way he greeted you when you walked in the door was the embodiment of who he was. In my life, I probably only visited Pellegrini's half a dozen times. And even I felt um, great emotion when I first heard of Sisto's tragic death. And that came home to me just how many people were feeling the same way because we all felt we knew him. He embodied our values. I want to pay my deepest condolences to his wife, Vicky, children, David and Lisa, and how tragic that just a week earlier his granddaughter, Sophia, was born. How tragic. The happiness, the emotion um, for that family, uh, for Sisto and his granddaughter, that was spoken about at his funeral, to have that ripped away from them in the way it was is so tragic. And Sisto must never be remembered for the way his life ended. He's got to be remembered for the way he lived his life. Coming to Australia in 1963, he displayed, he demonstrated, as I said earlier, he epitomised the migrant experience into Australia. He came here, he rolled his sleeves up, he lived uh, and enjoyed the freedom of Australia and he created employment for others, he created prosperity for others, he brought joy to so many people and of course he built a better life for his family. And isn't that the migrant experience? Isn't that the motivation? for people who come to Australia to ensure that their children and grandchildren have better opportunities than they had themselves. And boy, did Sisto make the most of those opportunities. He opened Pellegrini's with his very good friend, Nino Pangrazio. And as was referred to at the funeral, uh, Nino and Sisto were a bit like salt and pepper. Uh, and what an enduring partnership they had in a friendship sense, in a business sense, um, that I think, again, demonstrates the sort of person that Sisto was. I want to remark just very briefly on the tragic circumstances uh, that led to his death. And by no means should Sisto's life be defined by this. But the reality is, Sisto, a generous, kind-hearted man, saw somebody in trouble, or so he thought, in Burke Street, and without flinching, without questioning, he went to that person's aid. He saw a car on fire in the middle of Burke Street. Without thinking, he went to help that person. Tragically, shockingly, as it turned out, that person was the one who ripped him away from his family and to all Mal from all Melburnians. And this is a serious challenge for our country. Uh, the member for Melbourne Ports, I think, outlined it uh, very wisely. It's a challenge that uh, we've got to ensure we are up to. It's a challenge that, to date, I think Australia has done a good job. But, um, Fundamentalist Islamic terrorism uh, is something that uh, is not just a theoretical uh, problem that we discuss in universities or parliaments. It affects the lives of real people. It has affected the life of this great man, his family, his friends, and as I said, 
the many, many hundreds of thousands of people impacted by it. So that's what, in the end, motivates all of us in this chamber, I know, to ensure that we keep Australians safe, that we never, ever wave the white flag on fundamentalist Islamic terrorism, and do everything we have to to combat uh, this very insidious ideology. But again, Mr Deputy Speaker, I think it's more fitting to end on a high note, speaking about Sisto Malaspina's life. And I was on the phone to a friend of mine last night uh, who happened to just mention the number of times that he and his wife would attend Pellegrini's um, before the theatre. It was always packed, could never get a seat. And the last time they, they were there, which was uh, only a couple of months ago, Sisto said, if you don't mind, come down the back. I've got a couple of spots on a crate in the kitchen. Uh, doesn't that just highlight the, the generosity, the warmth, the mark of the man? And we've heard so many similar stories. And indeed, we all have a Sisto story. Um, rest in peace, Sisto Malaspina. Thank you for your life. Thank you for the example you've set for us all. And I hope we can live up to that example uh, and ensure that we don't suffer and nobody suffers in the way you have again.